Yo, welcome back. My five tips for fat loss. Some of these tips are probably not going to be the tips that you're used to, but to me, they're probably the most important. First tip, do not cut out all carbohydrates. Cutting out all carbohydrates is not the answer. Um, it can work, but just because it works doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. I will very rarely cut out all carbohydrates um, for a client. Um, obviously, it completely depends on where they're at. Um, if you're dieting for a show, it's completely different. If you're going for optimal health or you want to get into shape, nothing drastic. Um, and more importantly, if you want to see permanent results that are going to stay with you, you want to change a lifestyle, not you know just a diet with no carbs for 12 weeks and then you know you go to Marbella for a few weeks or you go off on an all-inclusive um, holiday and you just pile it all back on again and ruin your metabolism in the process. I structure carbs where they're supposed to be structured um, depending on the person depending on the goal you will find that to fix someone's metabolism or to reverse diet someone, or to put someone's metabolism in a better state, the single most important macronutrient is carbohydrates. So don't cut them out. And this whole carbs after 6 p.m. is absolute baloney. Absolute baloney. Sunglasses in case we need them. Okay. Hi Budapest. After 300 meters leave the roundabout at the second exit. Second, be more active with things that you like. There's no point hopping on a treadmill for an hour if you hate the treadmill. There's no point sitting on a bike for an hour if you hate the bike. Rollerblade, skateboard, play ice hockey, play basketball, play golf. Do something active that you like change your lifestyle not a diet and a training plan and a cardio regime as amazing as they can be you need someone who can change your lifestyle using all of these three that's going to suit you some of my clients go right 30 minutes rollerblading then i'm going to come back and i'm going to have breakfast sounds funny but yeah 30 minutes fasted rollerblading why not that client is gonna burn more calories than if they didn't. And once you're progressing bit by bit by bit, you will see permanent results. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be hops, it can be hula hoops. It doesn't matter what it is. Find something that you like that you are gonna to stick to. At the end of the day, if you find something that you enjoy, if you find a nutrition plan that you enjoy, within reason, you are gonna see results. So we're just crossing the border into Slovakia from Hungary. Hungary, yeah. On the way to Bratislava for the day. Excited to see what it's like. Neither of us know any Slovakian at all. Frank can speak Czech. No, so I can't speak Czech. I know well, a couple of words of Czech. There's a very big difference. You can get by in Czech, I think. No, I can't get by. Like, I can say a few things. I bet I'll get by. <laughs> Frank's had some music on, and all of a sudden, wasn't expecting this in his playlist. Oh, that's not your vibe. Today is gonna be the day that they're gonna throw it back to you. <laughs> but by now, you should have somehow realized you're gonna be the one that saves me. Three, my favorite, surround yourself with good people. 
surround yourself with people who are going to support you on this journey because there are so many people out there who won't. Even if they don't want to do what you do or they don't want to help you make this healthy transition, find people who are going to support you. Unfortunately, a lot of people won't and you need to deal with that. You need to either keep them in your life um, and find a way of accommodating their negativity or you need to cut them out of your life. I've done both. The more successful I've got over the last few years, the more negative they become and the more they begrudge my success. Objects cast the biggest shadows around areas that they're most close to. This will cause people around you to question themselves when they're too lazy to do so and subconsciously they will get jealous. They won't support you. Some people will and some people won't. Find a network of people that support your journey or it's going to be very, very difficult. Unfortunately, some people's other halves don't like their other half losing weight, progressing, doing something out of insecurity, perhaps. There's various different reasons why that can happen. Um, you know, in relationships, when your other half is you know not really supporting you is it because you're spending too much time at the gym is it because it's making them feel insecure about how how they are and how lazy they are or is it because they're afraid of the attention that you might get elsewhere or that you have something else in their life that doesn't involve them this is an issue and this is something that you guys are going to need to deal with um and something that i'm going to need to deal with when i find someone else In Bratislava, Frank and his phone. What's the name of this castle? Slavinsky Hrad. That's it. What Frank said. Um, <laughs> but look at this view. Four. Ask yourself why you're doing this all in the first place. Not I want to lose weight. Da, da, da. Why are you doing this? Why do you want to lose weight? Why do you want to go to the gym? Why do you want to compete? That's a really important question because a lot of people in this world are doing things, bum, 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 and then, oh yeah, I, I, I want to get in great shape so I'm going to go to the gym all the time. Not if you're not doing the right thing in the gym. It's so important to be so specific with the things that you do to achieve your goals, no matter what it is in life. Formulate a plan around why you want to achieve something. So you need to know what you want to achieve. You need to question why you want to achieve it. And then you need to decide how you're going to achieve it. Getting that whole setup in place in your head is going to make it so much easier when you're at the depths of giving up. And you're like, why am I really doing this? Do I want to add years to my life? Um, Am I doing it for myself to prove to myself that I can succeed at something, that I can stick to something, that I have some self-worth? Some people go to the gym um, to kind of find something in their life that they can actually control. Some people go to the gym because it's a release, like me. Um, it's a de-stress mechanism. Um, some people want to go to lose weight. Then you question why do you want to lose weight? And once you've got a really good picture around why you're trying to do something, one, it becomes a lot easier to be specific in some shortcuts that you can make to actually get there. Be specific about what you want to achieve so that you can be really specific with how you're going to achieve your goals. Stop for some food and of course our coffee choice. It's really impressive to be honest. Look at that. Good stuff. Minty. But I've ordered something a little bit different. Um, not the usual Caesar salad or the bacon and eggs in the morning. Yeah, we're back. So I've gone for hummus, a bit of pita bread. It looks absolutely beautiful. Look at this. 
These guys. What are these? Falafel. It's up there. Falafel. Falafel. Five. My last tip for a fat lot. A positive mindset. Cannot express how important a positive mindset is for everyone. Uh, no matter what you want to achieve, no matter what you want to do. Like I said before about finding something that you enjoy. If you're going to find something that you like, that you enjoy doing, you're going to stick to it. If someone gives you a nutritional program and a training program, and as long as you're in a calorie deficit, as long as it's some bit robust, if you firmly believe that it's going to work, I believe that it's going to help you. I believe you're going to lose weight. Um, as a scientist, I should be like, no, that you know, that's not optimal. This isn't optimal. For the sake of a few percent of something being optimal, uh, a few percent, if it's something that you hate, you're not going to stick to. I relate this a lot back to patients. When I've seen patients and dealt with patients over the last few years, cancer patients, there are two types of cancer patients. The people who, I've got cancer, you know, but I don't care, I'm going to fight it. I'm going to, whatever it takes, I'm going to come out the other end um, and I'm going to leave cancer in the dust. And then there's the flip side of the coin where people are like, yeah, well, you know, I don't really... There's no point me turning up to my appointment. There's no point really taking my meds. Like, honestly, and I used to see this every day. And you need to decide. You need to, you already know. I don't even have to ask you the question because it's already come into your head which one you are. I know which one I am. And I find it difficult to get my head around people who are, mm, yeah, you know, well, the world is against me, but... But when you make that positive decision to become, uh, you know what, I'm going to beat this. Like, this is what I want to do. You know, this is how I'm going to go about it. This nutritional program is right. This training program is right. You will be in a positive mindset. As a scientist, I should look for evidence as to why that positive mindset works. But it just does. Like, if you're in a positive mindset of... This is going to work. I firmly believe it will. If you go back to the cancer patients, the people who are like, I'm going to fight this. Scientifically, where is the rationale behind that patient living longer than the other? Well, if you want to be technical about it, you know, that patient's going to hit his appointments on time. He's going to his medication on time. You know, he's going to probably eat right. He's going to stay active. He's going to do loads of small things that are going to accumulate to a positive outcome. It's the same with a diet and training and nutritional program. If you feel like it's going to work and you have faith in a program, it's so much more likely to work. Frank's second tip for a successful business or service. Uh, another big mistake I see business owners make is not focusing tightly enough on a market they want to serve. They want everybody, right? So they go into business and they think, well, I got to get as many possible customers as I can, so I want to serve everybody. In fact, I was talking to a potential client yesterday, and I asked her, you know, what, what do you do? Like, how would you describe what you do? And she basically said, I help everybody. And I was like, wrong. <laughs> you can't do that. You've got to pick, focus in, target, because it's the specialist that gets paid. If you're doing everything for everybody, you're just like everybody else, and you Good will earn no money. Yeah. So there it is, yes, they're very abstract. I believe that a lot of what goes into weight loss is up here, or is how you feel about things, or how you look at things, thinking outside the box. A lot of it is being happy in yourself, in what you're doing, because at the end of the day, nobody wants to be absolutely shredded and miserable. That's it for me. Again, time to walk around another European city. Peace out, like, Subscribe. See you guys soon.